part four of Behaviorism, Operant Conditioning, Thorndike, and the World of Cats. It is Operant Conditioning different from Classical Conditioning. Classical Conditioning involved in organism passively responding to sim stimuli, simply responding to stimuli that was presented to it. Operant Conditioning, the organism must first act upon or operate on the environment in some way. An operation is an act or behavior. The pleasure principle is related to this. Behaviors followed by a pleasurable outcome tend to be reinforced and tend to be repeated. These pleasurable outcomes could be mouse pellets, praise, money, recognition, attention. These all reinforce behavior and tend to be repeated. Pleasure principle, the Pain principle, I guess. Behavior followed by painful outcomes are reinforced and tend not to be repeated. Painful outcomes could be electric shock. It could be yelling, imprisonment, embarrassment, that sorts of thing. All right? So, humans learn behaviors as they act upon the world and are rewarded or punished. So we don't have a personality. We simply have neural pathways caused by rewards and punishment. A behaviorist is concerned with A, B, C, the antecedent, what comes before the behavior or the conditions, the behavior itself, and the consequences. What follows the behavior? Is it reinforced? And what is the reinforcer? Edward Lee Thorndike enters upon the stage. Now, he was concerned, he recognized mental units which is the existence of thought. A mental unit is anything sensed or perceived. So he did recognize mental units as opposed to uh, uh, Watson. He did not recognize any mental units, simply behavior. To him, physical unit is an observable behavior. Um, it is what occurs and the physical cause. It is the response and the effect. So a physical unit is an observable unit. A mental unit cannot be observed, but it does exist. So Thorndike had some cats. A, B, C. Here's the cat story. He had a hungry cat in a box with a fish outside the box. The antecedent, the conditions, hungry cat in box, fish outside the box. The behavior. The cat would do a lot of behaviors and eventually press the lever that opened the door. And the consequence, the cat would then eat the fish. So learning here was how many times it took, how long it took for them to figure out how to press the lever. And the cat was put in the box and they would measure the times and after a while, uh, it became shorter and shorter and shorter. Then after a time, the cat immediately pressed the lever. Because of the antecedent, this condition, the behavior pressing the lever, and it was rewarded for it. So, learning in this sense was the number of times it took for the cat to discover lever pushing equals fish. Trial and error. This is different. This is incremental. It's not insightful learning. As I said, the cat is making connections between lever pressing and door opening. It's not a sudden real realization. Aha! It is the number of times it took to look, to learn. You and I, human beings, with our wonderful frontal lobes, we have insightful learning where the picture becomes clear. But the cat not having frontal lobes, trial and error until they finally associate pressing lever with opening door. The more they tried it, the fewer tries it took. Number of trials, and look at here, up to 25. So, not very effective learning. So, laws of learning, the law of effect, the strength of a connection is influenced by the consequence of the response. Law of effect, a behavior is influenced by what follows it. Law of exercise, the more a stimulus-induced response is repeated, the longer it will be retained. The more a stimulus-induced response, here's a behavior and a response, the more it is repeated, the longer it will be retained. So repeating this box thing for longer and longer and longer, the cat will retain it longer. Law of readiness, when an organism is ready to act, reinforcing it for doing so, and uh, 
if reinforcing, it is reinforcing for it to do so. When a cat is ready or a human being is ready to act, wants to do something, reinforcing it is allowing it to do that. And um, when an organism is not ready to act, forcing it to do it is annoying. All right, that has to do with cats and mice. What this means is if a child is ready, developmentally ready, and wants to learn, being able to learn is reinforcing in and of itself. Not being able to learn is not reinforcing. End behaviorism, part four, operant conditioning.